What time does your celebration start? 3.15. Looks like you might be a little late. No, I think I'll be okay. I'm glad to have met you, Forrest. Otherwise, I might have gone postal waiting here. It was, it was nice meeting you two. You want this last piece of pizza? No, I'm full. You know, Forrest, it sounds like those young watershed folks had a lot of respect for you. I, I guess so, but I've got a lot of respect for them. So you're optimistic? You think our watersheds are in good hands? Oh, yes. Those young folks, they have the opportunity and ability to do great things. Really? Yeah, no question. They're so much better prepared than I was. Their education's better. So much fine research been done since my career started. They can use that work and build on it. And today's technology is so powerful by comparison. Why, I was in the Stone Age at the beginning of my career. Figuratively. And, and, and maybe most importantly, I'll put it this way. My mom always said, smart people learn from their mistakes. Smarter people learn from other people's mistakes. Your mistakes? Mine and others, but if they could just learn from my mistakes, boy, they'd be smart. <laughs> but overall, there were more good times than bad. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't trade it. Oh, look. There comes my boss. Bye, Forrest. Nice to meet you. Well, that was a nice lady. My cell phone's vibrating. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's uh, EUSC. <laughs> You're calling me back about my Lotus Notes problem. I, I put in that ticket three months ago. Oh, really? OK, well, it's kind of late now. I, I just retired this week. So, Pete? Is this Pete? Sleepy Pete from the ID team? Man, what are you doing there? I knew you moved off the district, but I had no idea. What a surprise. Hey, uh, sorry, I got to go to my retirement party. Uh, 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 good luck, buddy. Mr. Stump. Dude, what up? <laughs> Flo, Eddie, it's good to see you again. What are you doing here? Getting ready to partay. I am way stoked. We, we heard about your retirement bash, and we decided we had to come. Well, that's really nice of you. I'm not, I'm not sure who's going to show up. But Maybe it'd just be the three of us. No way, man. It'll be a total crowd scene. Like, all of the Earth scientists will be there. It should be fun. Tell us, Forrest, what did you do on your last day? Uh, staff meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed a little pointless, though. I guess there's not a lot different than most staff meetings. That... <laughs> and I went through my desk and boxed up my books. And the folks at the office had a cake. It was, it was real nice. So you give a speech tonight? I hope not. I'm not much at speeches. No, I heard you were in that BMP skit at the Phoenix conference. Is that true? Yeah, but that was a skit. Somebody wrote the words for me, and a speech would be a lot harder. Dude, I heard that skit was sick. <laughs> I wouldn't worry. You'd be awesome. I agree. Just be yourself. Everybody loves you. Well, well what do you think I should say? Talk change, man. We need to think about that. You know, what you've seen, you know, like what Jerry used to say, what a long, strange trip it's been. That would be good, but also, though, so, though much has changed, how so much is the same? Change. Like, like how we think about fire. Right. First we put them out. And now we start them. <laughs> and, and the large wood. First we took them out. And now we toss them in. <laughs> And the roads. First we put them in. Now we take them out. <laughs> and the pipes. First we put them in. And now we take them out. And, and all those little dams. First we put them in. And now we take them out. First we put them in. <laughs> Aren't you? Spock of the Starship Enterprise. But you're from the future, right? Flo, he's a walk-on. Only Forrest talks to walk-ons. Hey, hey, it's OK. The writers included us in this one. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Correct. Our transporter ex experienced a malfunction causing a flaw in the fabric of space-time, and I was conveyed here as a result. So, so where are you going now? I've deduced a warp in the Earth's magnetic sphere near a place 
called Mount Palomar, the best possibility of contact with the Enterprise is in that vicinity. Uh -huh. but, but, but what are you doing here? Using public transportation. Highly <laughs> logical. <laughs> it reduces the burning of scarce fossil hydrocarbons. However, on my way here, in addition to numerous life forms, my tricorder detected traces of chocolate. <laughs> I'm sorry, Spock. It's, it's all gone. How unfortunate. It was consumed? Some time ago. There's, there's pizza left, though. Hmm. Canadian bacon and pineapple. No, thank you. <laughs> Forrest, I'm down for some pizza if you're not going to eat it. Down with it? Ah, 21st century skater idiom. When I, was arrived, when I arrived, you were engaged in what appeared to be some sort of tribalistic dance ritual. Please explain. Wrong, dude. We're just screwing around. Yes. <laughs> kind of celebrating. It's Forrest's retirement banquet today. Screwing around? Celebrating? Highly illogical. And you give banquets before you sleep? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm retiring from the Forest Service after over 40 years. Retiring. Ah, perhaps you mean reserved or muted? Yet you seem pleased, even exuberant. <laughs> well, the, the word has several meanings. It, in this case, it means I've completed a career and, and get to start another one while receiving a check from a grateful nation. <laughs> You will be paid a portion of your salary, but perform no work? That's about the size of it. Fascinating. Sweet. Forrest was one of the first Earth scientists in the whole nation. He's legendary, dude. Strange. He does not appear to be fictional, and I would have reason to know. Earth science, interesting. Limited in scope, of course, but interesting. Well, limited? Dude, Earth science is like everything. Given your location in space-time continuum, that perspective is understandable. <laughs> but in the larger universal scheme, your Earth science is perhaps not trivial, but still rather insignificant. Wow, Mr. Spock, a while back we were talking about the importance of scale. I guess your thinking is a, a bit broader than ours. You are correct. I have considered your work and your thinking. It appears to be following a very logical evolutionary progression. Forrest, I told you, you rock, man. I was describing all of you, your collective earth science. Our progress, it will continue? The outcome is not calculable. There are simply too many variables. But largely, it depends on what you do. You mean our actions? Precisely. If you continue to approach questions logically, continue to apply science in the face of shifts in direction and changes in policy, continue to maintain your course, progress is very likely. Well, well, we can do that. Spoken like a human. The, <laughs> sch the schedule for the metro indicated my bus should have been here 75 seconds ago. I detect no indication at this location. This is highly irregular. Welcome to our world. <laughs> Unfortunately, the only time the bus will be late or be on time is when you're late. That is very illogical. Such inconsistency make my attempts to adapt to your conditions extremely difficult. You're doing fine, dude. I mean, other than those ears and that kind of funky <laughs> shirt, you fit right in. Plus, you already got a cell phone. I'm not a dude, dude. <laughs> I am Spock, and this is a communicator. It performs almost as many functions as your cell phone, though not Super Mario Brothers, unfortunately. <laughs> there is one thing I need, though. What's that? It is a small, magnetized plastic chip. I believe you refer to it as a credit card. How might I procure one? At a bank. But you'll need a credit check and several forms of ID and... Ah, here comes my transport. Yes, it's a number three inbound. Farewell and live and prosper. Dude, like our bus is right behind it. Forrest, quickly before we go, how would you sum up all the best things in your career in the Forest Service? Quick, that's easy. The people and the resources. Here it comes, let's go.
is a great hydrologist starting retirement some say a legend in his career to younger scientists fresh out of college seeking knowledge starting careers they were free channel loves to meander starts high in the forest flows down to the sea she is free free flowing she is free Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ranger Dan, of course. I've had the pleasure of being, being chosen to emcee tonight's little gathering for Forrest going away to celebrate a long and productive career. And as I look out, I can see this is really an impressive gathering. I've never seen so many project killers in one room at one time. <laughs> I've told Forrest is running a little late. He's had some transportation problems. He's apparently en route, so the organizers have asked me to make a few announcements while he's uh, on his way. First of all, you'll notice in your program, it calls for the barbecue on the optional beach tonight, starting at 6.30 and running to 11. And I'm told it's quite a spread. For 26 bucks, it ought to be. <laughs> Also, there's a green rig, uh, I believe it's number 4377, 4377 in the roundabout out in front. The lights are on. The engine's running. It's in gear. <laughs> if that's your rig, you may want to fake a phone call right about now. Also, importantly, for those of you who received awards last night, congratulations, and don't get too attached. Apparently, there's been some issues raised with the ballot count from the southern region. <laughs> Hanging chads, a recount is currently underway. <laughs> also, somewhere here I have a note, a note from the San Diego Health Department requesting anyone who enjoyed halibut at the banquet last night, <laughs> please stick around for a few routine tests after the show. <laughs> Poor bastards. <laughs> Also, the San Diego Chamber of Commerce asked me to pass along reassurances that the weather is never, ever like this. <laughs> if you have your agenda, please note we have a couple meeting changes for tomorrow. First, the Earth Sciences branch of the Friend of Applex will meet at 6.30 in the phone booth across from the lobby. <laughs> also, after the barbecue, New York Yankee fans will be holding a wake at the south end of the beach. <laughs> And finally, Ranger Dan Fan Club will meet immediately following this session in the Del Mar Room. <laughs> that room will never be big enough. <laughs> and last but not least, for those, who you, those of you who did not or could not pay for the barbecue, conference organizers will be providing room temperature halibut free of charge. <laughs> What's that? Oh, well, I see uh, Forrest has arrived. Before we hear from him, there are a few people who would like to share some words. 4377. That's my rig. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, Forrest, we're really going to miss you. It was so great working with you, and I can't say thanks enough for all of the help that you've given me over my career. I remember the first time you took me out to the creek to show me how to sample water. That was so cool. You were so patient, and you made me get that DH-48 in there and get the sample correctly without the sediment on the bottom. I'm going to protect that gabion supply you left me. I'm going to use them religiously and only in the best places where they'll have the best effect, like you taught me. And I wanted to tell you too, I think you're the only person I know that actually used the DITS integrated turbidity sampler and I'm really proud of you for pulling that off. Have a good career, Boris. Thanks. We're really going to miss you. You have made a significant impact on this unit. Uh, it's not going to be the same without you here anymore. Good luck, guy. <laughs> this person is probably older than the forest and has seen more rocks roll down a hill slope than uh, most people have ever experienced in a landslide. And this guy's got rocks in his head that still rattle. The best thing that I enjoyed while working with you was that you kept completely out of my way and I was able to do my job. Mr. Forrest was a great help when he came and picked me up. Uh, he came over to me when I was standing on the street and on dirt road and I was uh, kicking these mud puddles, uh, connecting them all together in a line and creating a stream and uh, he thought I'd be good at hydrology. Well Forrest, I sure enjoyed working with you over these years. It was a lot of fun. Don't screw up again Forrest. Another fellow who enjoyed working with you a lot, I know, was Earl Ruby. Um, unfortunately, Earl's not with us. He passed away earlier this year. Um, but as you know, um, you learned a lot from Earl, and he meant a lot uh, to you. And I hope that, uh, that you remember him when you go into retirement. Hopefully, uh, you'll go into retirement with good memories. You face some tough challenges. Uh, you met those challenges, and all of us are better off for it. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to visit with you after you retire. Good luck. Godspeed. Forrest, you were a beacon in the night. You were a light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to miss you around here. We're just going to have to press on without you. I don't know how we're going to do it, man. Have a lot of fun in your retirement. Good luck to you. Forrest, it's been a long haul. <laughs> Maybe longer for some and not for others. Forrest, Long time, a lot of work, but just want to say from the fish and watershed community, we greatly appreciate your efforts on behalf of uh, fish habitat and riparian vegetation everywhere. And don't forget that retirement is as retirement does. In the beginning of his career, he had a tough time, you know, convincing people. He was always willing to keep trying, and he had a way of having simple communication to people. And I think that was one of his best abilities. Forrest who? Well, hello, I'm, I'm Andrea from WETT and Forrest, and I go, go way back, actually. I don't know if you know it, but uh, I used to work under Forrest one, one time, and he taught me everything I know about professionalism. It's under Forrest that I learned to dress as cleanly as I do and to represent. Our TV station in the proudest tradition. So, Forrest, this one's for you, buddy. Stay really busy. It's something you really like to do. And I wish you good health um, and success in your retirement. And always keep that box of chocolates handy. Forrest, I just want to say congratulations. I'm really happy for you on your retirement. Got any more chocolate? <laughs>
these friends that I've never lived within a hundred or a thousand miles of, but I feel so close to. I guess it's because we share this land and these challenges and this job that can be so hard and so great at the same time. There's been lots of things that can make it hard to be a Forest Service Earth scientist. So much paperwork, so many arguments, so many changes in what our leaders say they want us to do. That issue whiplash that Fred Fellow talked about. It's not easy to see the prettiest land in the world and feel like sometimes you're the only one speaking for it. And if you mess up, that's it. You know, though, I love this job and I've loved it all along. How lucky I've been. How magnificent these mountains and forests that I've gotten to work in. The powerful and awesome streams. The fury of Mother Nature's storms slamming into my watersheds. The amazing soils that catch and hold the waters of life. And all those creatures that call it home. The bears and hawks and deer. The tiny insects and fungi and all that that run the place. The awesome silence and wildness. Yeah, the shifting politics and mindless bureaucracies and all those differences of opinion about how it ought to be. It ground me down sometimes, put a wet blanket on the job and made me want to start running. But you know, I would run to the land, to the mother, to the national forests, to drink in the landscape, to drink the water, to listen to the silence, to the water in the streams, the wind in the trees, to remember her and to try to know her better, to revel in so many mysteries that I will never penetrate. Sometimes I felt like nobody would listen and that what I would recommend it was ignored. And sometimes I was flabbergasted that they did listen and they did what I suggested. Sometimes that scared me. Was I right about what I'd proposed? Yeah, sometimes I lost my patience, but the earth abides. And it shows me what patience is. And you know, the earth ignores all the nonsense and all the hogwash that gets said. It's not listening. It's just not listening, you know what I mean? So I'm not listening to the nonsense either. I'm listening to the land. And I'm running and I'm dancing with the land. And that's what keeps me going, and it's enough. Plenty, it's more than enough. Sometimes it seemed like we're all on different teams, like it was some silly game and what mattered was who won, not what was right for the land and the soil and the air and all. It was even like a war sometimes, and I didn't like that. But then sometimes we all came together like we're all in the same boat. We all knew what we needed to do and how we needed to think about the place with this deep respect for each other. Well, I liked that. And we're getting better at it. Like the common ground was the ground itself. I really liked that. And I like my Forest Service friends. Yeah, I've hated it when people make those loud public pronouncements about the bad choices they think we make and those who insist we follow just one law and forget about all the others. I hear them, I'm not really listening. What I'm really listening to is the land. That's where the answers are real, where we can remember and remember again. And sometimes the land says we could do better and we gotta listen to that. And we gotta hear that little voice and realize that the real court is in session when it rains really hard or the forest catches fire, and the real verdict is in what's left afterwards. There's truth in this land. Yeah, they kept changing the names of the soils, but those soils are pretty much the same. Just the names changed. Yeah, we have some great mapping computers now, but the best map is still one-to-one -one scale, and the real map is out there, and the real database only needs a good pair of boots to access it. That won't change. Yeah, it's sad to be retiring, going, you know, off into the unknown. But you know, I'm not leaving that part that I've loved the most. 
I'm not leaving her. In fact, I'll have more time for being out there now, and that's what I'll do. I'm enriched by what I know of her ways, and I'm more relaxed about her fates, knowing there are new Earth scientists ready and able to be good stewards, to see it, listen, and practice the work of stewardship, and teach what they know. I wish them hard work. That'll be more useful to them than luck in this game. I hope they'll remember what it's really about. It's the stewardship. It's not the endless debates about my druthers versus yours. It's not about looking good on paper or in the make-believe world of all those glowing computer screens. It's the stewardship, first and last. I still worry that we worry about the wrong stuff and I hope we'll keep challenging our own assumptions. I hope we'll not make the same mistakes over and over. How many times do we need to point out that roads next to streams aren't such a good idea? That compacted soils won't grow trees nearly so well as uncompacted soils? We understood soil conservation in America after the Dust Bowl, but we still don't treat soil like the fragile treasure that it is. Good grief. Yep, life is like a watershed. You never know what you're going to get. Or you might get a drought, or you might get two floods and then a drought, then a wildfire, fire, then an ice storm. It keeps on. It changes, but it stays around. It gives and gives, and sometimes it's all wild up. Sometimes it's quiet and slow. It's got its days and its nights, its storms and calms. This land that inspires us all, inspires us to gratitude. This beauty and harmony that inspires us to love, and maybe even sometimes to greatness, but most of all, to humility. And as Dr. Franklin said, always approach these systems with great humility, because you don't know them that well. You know a lot about them, but you don't know everything about them, and you don't know the future. You never know when things will really change, when the big one will hit, or how. Yep, watersheds record our history, they bear the imprint of our actions and our inactions. All the things we did right and not so right, just like us. So, looks like the stewardship is in our hands now. We stand before these vast and awesome landscapes. It's up to us to listen and to learn and to practice and teach.